Hey people, I uh, had an interesting sort of interaction with ANZ this week and I thought I'd share it with you guys. Maybe it won't be any surprise to any of you, but you know, I thought it was an interesting sort of indication of banking policy and where it's going. So we're gonna loan one of our properties, interest only, bit over 300 grand. And it's been sitting on interest only, variable rate for ages, and it's been a good deal. It's certainly been cheaper than most of the banks we deal with. And that was all sitting fine. And I don't probably keep the closest eye on my mail that I should. And so I never saw any notices about a rate increase. And then I checked my banking, which I do pretty regularly, and checked the rate on it. And it went up, literally the day I checked. So I had a quick look at what it had gone up. And it had gone up 0.47%. Uh, so just a hair under half a percent in one rise. Out of cycle, nothing to do with the Reserve Bank. So I rang them up and asked what the heck was going on and they basically said oh it's government policy we've all got to put our rates up that's just life tough luck now all the other banks i deal with already have put their rates up due to this apra rubbish and it's already happened and they were nowhere near as high as this i ended up going from a 4.8 variable which is not the best but it's not that bad to a 5.27 variable, which put it out of the league of any of my other banks. And I deal with bloody AMP. They're one of the worst banks as far as punitive interest rate rises. And I just sort of said, well, this is really unacceptable. What the heck are you doing? And, you know, on the phone, they kind of started talking about maybe a little bit of a reduction, but not much. And I said, made some offhand comment about P&I just to see what the reaction was like and uh, her eyes lit up, I could tell, over the phone, and she went, oh, you're willing to go to P&I? Let's sharpen the pencil then. And it was quite an interesting sort of little discussion after that because she straight away dropped well below what we're at before, um, something like 4.2% for a P&I investment loan. Um, bear in mind, we've got a bit of borrowing with them, so we are on a break-free package, so we do get a bit of a discount on top, but they were giving me an even better discount. So 4.2, I went, well, that's not too bad. And then she said, oh, we've also got this deal on fixed rates at the moment. And I'm thinking, oh, okay. And 3.88% fixed for two years P&I. So the numbers break out a little like this, and I calculated it out so I could kind of tell you. On our own loan, old, on our old loan setup, uh, we were paying 4.8%, and our monthly payment was around 100, sorry, 1,330 bucks. Not too bad. Positively geared property, like we've got three rental incomes off this property, so we're not complaining. When it went up to 5.27%, that added $130 a month, it's a little bit over that, but $130 a month, took us up to 1460 a month. Now, that's a little bit of, you know, money out of your back pocket and I'm not getting anything for it. Still the same loan, not paying anything off. When I refinanced, and let, bear in mind, no assessment, uh, no paperwork, they just did it literally over the phone. I talked to them and they go, yep, no worries, all done, are you happy with this? The only downside is I lost my offset, but I got enough, off, enough other offsets to use that one offset account on one loan is not a big deal. So once I added it to p and it changed to 3.88%. And our payments went to just just over 1620, which meant that we were paying $164 a month on top of the new higher rate. Now, that sounds like a little bit, but I'm paying off about $250, $300 a month on that loan, and I'm now paying a much lower interest rate for the next two years, and it's locked. They can't mess with me, and I'm paying P&I. Well. I'd rather be on interest only, but let's face it, I want to pay some of my debt down. It may as well be this one, especially if they're going to give me free money to do it. So yeah, it was an interesting interaction. I'm uh, yeah, deleveraging the rest of our portfolio a bit at the moment. Like we're selling off two, three properties, basically end of the line properties that we can't do a lot to, that we've either had for a long time and they've helped our portfolio, but we no longer need them. They're sort of nothing properties. And one that we did a big reno on, it's a really nice property, but there's no real room to develop it any further. And um, a mix of locations, too, particularly in New South Wales, where I just don't have the location. I'm not close enough to do any maintenance to it. Uh, I don't know about what you got, how far you guys think I live away, but it's about 24 hours of travel to get there, which is pretty hellish. Um, and they both need a bit of work. And Orange, 
if you know New South Wales at all, the market there is kind of moving quite strongly and the builders are all so busy building new stock that they're not interested in dealing with you. So I've tried to have renovation work done, tried to sort other stuff out. I've even had people trying to purchase it, trying to get building inspections done, and they can't get the building inspectors to show up because they're too busy building, doing other things, certifying jobs. So yeah, we're selling off those three, and mostly that's down to APRA, um, because we went from having surplus borrowing capacity to negative borrowing capacity in literally nothing more than the change of government policy because all our rental, a big chunk of our income, more than half our income is rental, and when they started shading that by 20%, and then they started treating all their loans instead of the three point something to four point something percent we were paying, they were assessing them as 7%. Suddenly, not only did we have more debt costs and we had less income, but they just gave us less borrowing capacity in the end. So it's an interesting set of um, circumstances. And I've got mates who are looking at me going, why are you selling investment properties? These are positive gear, they're really good, they're good solid things. And it's because opportunity cost. And that's the thing, you've got to look at your whole portfolio. And you know, this property here, I've got room to develop two more rental incomes on the front. We're planning to build two Airbnbs into the front of the property, big empty chunk of yard. We've got three incomes off it already, and I run my business out of part of it as well. So that's a property with more development. I'm happy to take a two year fixed rate and continue to develop it and you know, solidify my position. Plus, it's a two minute walk from my house. I can maintain it and use it so easily. And I know all the tenants. No management, they're all mates, and I get really good income from it. You know, it's win, win, win. Anyway, if you guys uh, have any questions about any other, any of the deals we're doing, or you know, even want to just comment on this rubbish, uh, yeah, I'd be happy to hear from you. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, like this video. Cheers, people.